Hey guys, it's Landon Blake with Redefined Horizons, and this is another training video that we're doing for our team here. And this is a video was actually requested by one of our YouTube subscribers, Austin. Austin asked for a video on how to write land descriptions. So Austin, I'm doing this video for you. Move this up the priority list a little bit, but it's it's something that that all my folks uh, need to learn. All my techs need to learn. So that's a, that's a pretty broad topic, writing legal descriptions. So what I, I wanted to narrow that down a little bit. So what I'm gonna focus on today is writing the modern meets and bounds land description, what I call the modern meets and bounds land description. So what, what we're gonna teach you in this video is, what is that? What's the definition of a modern meets and bounds land description? What is it not? Why should you care if you're a boundary surveyor? What are meets? What are bounds? That's the two parts of a modern meets and bounds land description. Okay, so here's the definition that I have for what I call a modern meets and bounds land description. So a modern meets and bounds land description is a land description that contains both measurements and controlling calls. In a modern meets and bounds land description, number one, the measurements have the precision of a modern survey. Number two, the description includes a plat, graphical plat. Number three, it's complemented by a closure report. Number four, it doesn't read like a Shakespeare play. Number five, it's based on a good boundary survey. And number six, it properly conveys the intent to the retracing boundary surveyor. Now, what I need to do, I need to make a note. I need to go in and talk a little, a little bit more about some of these qualities, but that gives you the basic, the six basic aspects. Okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll repeat those. Number one has the measurements of a modern the measurements have the precision of a modern survey. It includes a graphical plat. It's complemented by a closure report. It doesn't read like a Shakespeare play. It's based on a good boundary survey and it conveys the intent to the retracing boundary surveyor. Okay, so those six qualities. So what is it not? Okay, so it is not a strip description. It's not an aliquot description. It's not a lock, lot and block description. It's not an area description. It's not a meets only description and it's not a bounds only description. Those are other types of descriptions. Um, and I need to do some more videos about those different types of descriptions. But when we say meets and bounds, we're not talking about any of those other types. Okay. So what is, when we talk about a meets and bounds description, uh, what are the two parts, the meets and the bounds? Okay. So the meets, meets is actually a French word related to the word for measurement. Okay. So a modern meets and bounds land description contains some measurements. Okay, what type of measurements? Well, we're typically dealing with three types of measurements. Okay, bearings, okay, or azimuths. Okay, but it's a way to express angles. So you can say bearings, uh, azimuths, or angles. Typically, we use bearings. Okay, distances and area. And now some people would say you could add coordinates to that. They're a type of measurement. Okay, so again, bearings, azimuths or angles, so we're expressing direction, distances, and area. Okay, and then you could add coordinates if you wanted to. So those are the types of measurements, right? The kind of measurements you see on a typical land survey, typical boundary survey map. Okay, what about the bounds? When we say meets and bounds, what is the bounds? Okay, the bounds, that we use the word bounds, but what we really mean when we say that, when we say meets and bounds, is we really mean controlling calls. Okay, so what kind of controlling calls? So uh, there's there's several different kinds of controlling calls. It could be a call for a natural monument, call for an artificial monument, call for an adjoiner, call for a design line, call for a geodetic control point, call for an administrative or jurisdictional boundary, call for a right-of-way center line or sideline, call for an extension or offset, offset line uh, from any of the above. Okay, so a controlling call is some type of feature in the real world that you want to use to control the location of your description. Okay, so that's that's what a controlling call is. Now, we use the word bounds. Why, why do we say bounds? Okay, well, we say bounds because in the old days, you would have bounds only descriptions. Okay, so bounds only descriptions uh, would, would be a description like the following. Uh, bounded on the north by the lands of Blake, bounded on the uh, west by the lands of Huerta, bounded on the south by the lands of Padilla, bounded on the east by 
uh, the North Fork of the Flathead River. That's an example of a bounds only description. So there's no, there's no measurements in there. There's only controlling calls or bounds. But we get that word bounds because that's how they used to write it. Bounded on the east, bounded on the west, bounded on the south. Okay, so that's where we get bounds. But really in the modern meets and bounds description, the bounds really means the controlling calls. Okay, and so uh, let me just expand on that a little bit. And, and we, could, we could do a whole other set of videos on how to interpret land descriptions. Uh, but I want to explain why the controlling calls are important and how they relate to the meets or the measurements because it's a really important concept if you're going to be writing land descriptions. Remember, the, the sixth characteristic of a modern meets and bounds land description is that, uh, that you can convey your intent to the retracing boundary surveyor so he puts the description in the right place. Okay, so if we look over here, I'm going to give you an example of a course, what we call a course, in a modern meets and bounds land description. Okay. So we could say west 1,320 feet to a redwood post marking the east one quarter corner of section 23. And I'll move out of the way here. I know you guys can't see this. Okay, that's an example of a course. It's one course or one leg of a modern meets and bounds land description. Okay, so let's see if we can identify the meets and the bounds or the controlling call. Okay, so the meets is the measurement. Remember we said it's direction which is a bearing or an azimuth or an angle, okay? And then it's distance. Those are typically the two meets that we use. Okay, so we have here, we have the direction, west, cardinal direction. And here we have 1320, that's our distance. Okay, now the controlling call is the redwood post marking the east quarter corner of section 23. That's the controlling call. Now, let me explain why that is important. It's really important. The, the number one mistake that new land surveyors make when they write meets and bounds land description is they either forget or they goof up the controlling calls. Okay, so it's important because <clears throat> let's say we have our starting point here. Let's just say this is our POB, okay? We have our starting point and we go out and we measure that, okay? Let's just say uh, that it's the center of the section. It's the center of section 23. So we go out and we measure it. Maybe it's monumented or we establish it through survey. Okay, so this is the center of section 23. Okay, and then we come over and we, we measure, we find the monument for the east quarter corner of 23. So let's just say we have two measurements and we measure this distance between them. And we find out it's not 1320 like the land description says, it's 1322.1. So it's a little, lo little longer than, than what's in the record. Where do you put, where do you terminate this line, this course of your land description? Do you terminate it at 1320? or do you terminate it at 1322.1, okay? If you have the controlling call here and you believe you found this controlling call and, and, and the center of section 23, if you properly establish the co controlling calls on each end of your line, you're gonna hold this measurement, not that record distance, what we call the record distance. So the meets or the measurements in a modern meets and bounds land description as a general rule yield to the bounds or the controlling call. In other words, if you find a difference between the two, you hold the controlling calls. You make your measurement fit the controlling calls. Now, there's some exceptions to that, which we'll talk about in some other videos, but that's the basic premise. Okay, so that's where we get the term meets and bounds. Now, I, I skipped this one. Why should you care? I'm sorry, I apologize, I skipped that. Why should you care? If you're a boundary server today, why should you care about meets and bounds? modern meets and bounds land description. Well, the main reason why is it's one of the best kinds of land descriptions that you can write, okay? So that's one reason. You know, they're, they're in, in most situations, um, modern meets and bounds is gonna be the best choice to convey intent to a retracing boundary surveyor. Now, there are exceptions to that. So I still will write aliquot descriptions and I will I will occasionally write strip descriptions and, and um, 
I don't do area descriptions very often, but I do occasionally write, I'll do lot and block descriptions. So there are other times when those other descriptions are very appropriate. But for a lot of what we do, uh, the meets and bounds land description, modern meets and bounds land description is going to be a good choice. And so you need to know about meets and bounds land descriptions because you should be writing them. If you're a land surveyor, there are many, many times, even most of the times, when if you're going to write a land description, you want to write a, meet, a meets and bounds. The other reason why you need to know is there's a lot of other people writing meets and bounds land descriptions, so you need to be able to read and interpret those. And that's, that's becoming more prevalent now with the advent of CAD and GIS. People really like the meets parts of the meets and bounds land description because they can kind of feed the GIS monster, right? You can, you can take it, you know, it's very hard to take a, those other types of descriptions and aliquot or a lot and block or a by area description or even a strip description sometimes and get, get the picture, see what the parcel looks like. But you can do that with the meets and bounds. And so that's why people like them. And you're going to be asked to you're going to be asked to write them. Okay, so I'll give you an example. I don't know I don't know that I've ever done this, but I've heard that um, sometimes title insurance companies or lenders will ask the land surveyor to write a meets and bounds description of a, an aliquot parcel on like a land title survey. Okay, so you need to you need to know how to do this. Uh, another example that we run into here in California is we have our local agency for uh, formation commissions, so our LAFCOs, If you want to annex property. You got to give them a meets and bounds description. They won't take any other kind. Okay, so you need to know about these if you're a land surveyor. So there's a there's kind of an introduction for you, Austin, to the modern meets and bounds land description. I'm going to do a bunch more videos on on just this type of description, and uh, there's lots to learn and lots to talk about. Um, so be patient with me. Over the next uh, you know couple months, I will try and get uh, a, a series. We'll probably have I don't know six, seven, eight videos maybe just on modern meets and bounds land descriptions. Okay, thanks for watching. Catch you guys on the next video.